Is PFLT worth it with this 10.3% dividend yield? Welcome back, guys. This is 5 Minute DD, a series where I give you a bunch of information about a stock. I try to keep it to five minutes. I've done a bunch of research on Pennant Park floating rate capital, and we're going to talk about the pros and the cons right now. Um, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and always like the video. That helps me out a ton, guys. And drop a comment on what stock you think I should do next for the 5 Minute DD series. I have tons in mind, but I love doing viewer requested ones, of course. So jumping right into it, a 10.3% dividend yield. Very impressive. Um, it is a higher yield, which can bring more risk, but still definitely a positive thing. This is a floating rate lender. So that is extremely important in this day and age with how the market has been going with interest rates. What that means is floating rate, for those that don't know, floating rate is the opposite of fixed rate. Fixed rate, like let's say you buy a car at a fixed rate of 4% interest. That means you will pay 4% interest on the car for the lifespan of the loan. Now a floating rate loan moves with the interest of well, what the interest rate is at the time. So that's really important. They both have, you know, cons and pros as well. But when it comes to floating rate lenders like PFLT, they typically do better in markets where the interest rate is higher. And that is why PFLT is really high on my list right now, because as interest rates continue to climb and the Fed continues to increase them, and at least threaten of increasing them, PFLT will make more money um, likely. The only downside to higher interest rates for a floating rate lender is that more people may default on their loans as the rate gets too high and they cannot pay them. But when it comes to what Pennant Park does, I think it's important to know that this is businesses. They're not doing personal loans. So it's a lot more difficult for a business to fully just collapse on their loans possible, but much less likely than say the average civilian. So moving on, they have monthly dividends, which I love. Monthly dividends are my favorite and BDCs typically do pay out monthly dividends. Now, when it comes to BDCs and REITs, they pay out 90% of their profit in their monthly dividends, meaning they keep 10% for what the company needs and what it can run with. And the rest is paid out. That is important. And legally they are obligated to do that. So that is an important note. So as long as the company is relatively doing well, the dividend should continue to do well. Solid dividend growth paid since 2011. Now let's jump into their dividend history. So we are on nasdaq.com and we can see here that 10.3% yield, really high PE ratio, but PE ratio, sometimes with dividend stocks, it gets a little wonky. And so I don't usually use that as a parameter for a dividend stock. Their annual dividend is $1.14. X dividend date is the 16th. So we can see right here, monthly dividends. If you guys have never used a dividend history when you're talking about a dividend stock, I would really recommend doing it. You can find so much information by just looking at this. You can see if they've skipped a dividend. You can see special dividends, which is next on our list because PFLT does pay special dividends. Although it is very rare, and I wouldn't purchase a stock just because of special dividends because like their name, they are not consistent and you never know when you will get one. Now, looking at this, we can see that there's not a lot of dividend growth here. It was a little bit all over the place, um, but basically 2019, yeah, see they were all over the first and second month and then they kicked it up. They got it to 95 cents and it's been 95 cents, or I'm sorry, not 95 cents, 9.5 cents a share since 2019 um, in March. So before then a little bit muggy and they did cut for just that 18 and 19 year. And before that, they were kind of at the nine and a half cents again. So very important to look into the dividend history. We can see that they have been growing relatively consistently um, since the inception of the fund in 2011. And they do say that um, that they've been paying, yeah, since 2011, which is impressive. Um, let's jump into their chart. We can see that on the year they are down about 13%, which is not good. But if we go to when they were lowest at the end of September, which a lot of stocks were really low at the end of September. It was a terrible month. It has gone up 20% since, but fallen back down another 5%. So definitely a little bit rocky with their price appreciation, but it was at a high of 14. So still not that bad compared to a lot of the other companies we're looking at. Um, and then it has 6.4 billion in total investable assets. Now that is Pennant Park itself, the company, not specifically this fund. They do have a couple of funds, but that high level of capital is extremely impressive to me. And I think it's really important to note that more money you have, the, the more opportunity you have to make more money. Now that is confusing to say, but think about it in this way. If they are able to invest in more startup companies and their um, marketing team is really good at finding those companies and their or management team, I should say, then the, the cap on their income is a lot higher than a company with less 
investment opportunity. That was a really complicated way of saying it, but basically more money means you can make more money in the long run. And I think a lot of people understand that and it's kind of hard to get into that space. But we will try, all of us, I hope you guys will all try to get into that space. Now let's jump into um, this chart right here. I'm getting distracted. So this is, it's a little bit small. It is from their investor relations, so we can actually just pull it up right here. Um, it's still blurry over here. So 125 different companies. This is just PFLT. This is not um, Pennant Park total. 9.4 million is the average investment size, which is insane. 10% um, yield at cost on debt portfolio. 87% secured investments. That is important. And we can see portfolio composition by investment type that they are typically first lien debt, which is, if I'm not mistaken, better. I think you get paid out sooner in first lien if the company were to go belly up. So it's good that they are typically, um, or at least striving for that first lien debt. Now let's go into the cons, low price appreciation. We see on the max chart here, it is down about 18% all time. You're buying these stocks, typically you don't buy them for price appreciation, and that is over the span of what, 13 years, 12 years. So it's not great, um, but again, with that dividend, your outcome, I would very highly guess that you would still be positive, especially if you were reinvesting dividends. So with that, you know, it's not really a, a great price appreciation fund. It's not like SPY that you buy and would just rely on that price to go up. This is what you're getting for the dividend yield of 10%. Um, this is actually nice that it hasn't been trailing down for a long time. A lot of other stocks, Annalee Capital, NLY, and um, not Owl Rock, but ORC um, is another one that just, the it's gone down in price for so long. So it is a con but again i mean if you compare it to the other ones in this sector it, i would consider it a pro even affected by interest rates that's another negative so if interest rates start to fall rapidly which would be great for the economy but it's not likely um, it could hurt pflt more but it also could bring in more business on the other end more people willing to take out loans because interest rates are lower so it the whole interest rate debacle is a pro and con you have to balance it with what you're looking for but overall pflt 10 percent Dividend yield is really good in my opinion. I think the company's management team is excellent. And while this is not financial advice, guys, I want everyone to go out and do their own research. This is a company I do own. So again, not financial advice, guys. Do not buy this company because someone on the internet says they own it. Do your own research um, and let me know what you guys think about this company in the, stock, in the comments below. And thank you guys for watching this video. As always, if you could like, comment, subscribe, that helps out the algorithm so much. I appreciate you guys for watching this video and I hope you had a good day in the market.